Hey friends, Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I've been spending some time this week with the 2015 Nissan Pathfinder three-row crossover SUV. It competes against vehicles like the Ford Explorer, the Honda Pilot, and the Toyota Highlander, just to name a few. And it, it's been quite popular, actually. So let's find out why that is. Nissan sells about 7,000 Pathfinders a month in the U.S. as of this video, making it popular but a few spots down the sales chart from the Explorer, Highlander, and Pilot. And as we have it here, it was introduced as a 2013 model with few changes since then when it comes to styling. It's very much different from Pathfinders of the past, with more subdued style of a car-like station wagon than the brawny off-road SUV it once was. It's lower, longer, and wider, and has well adopted Nissan's most recent styling, though it is likely due for a refresh course soon. RSL front-wheel drive we're testing here is a mossy color called Midnight Jade. I think it kind of looks muddy in low light, but glows a greenish-brown pearl in sunlight. A mid-level trim grade, it came with 18-inch alloys, fog lights up front, and halogen headlights. Because ours has the SL Tech package, at the rear you'll see an integrated tow hitch and wiring plug. While it's a nice thing to have with its 5,000 pounds of towing capacity, a Tech package seems an odd place for it. The interior of the SL is lined with leather seating heated both front and rear. The front seats are both power adjustable and quite comfortable even though they aren't of the zero gravity type found in more modern Nissan models. Trims and design of the dash are businesslike, the glove box, center console and door pockets offering a lot of storage spaces. A two-tone color scheme is light with accents of dark colored fake wood grain used sparingly. The center stack is reasonably simple, with hard controls for most audio and HVAC functions. It minimizes the necessity to page through menus on the Bose Audio and Infotainment touchscreen. This is good because its menus and common use functions aren't as intuitive as most. From behind the wheel, the driving position here is pretty good. It feels very much like a car from behind the wheel, not like an SUV. In other words, you're sitting down in this, not up on top of it. So you don't see much of the hood here, but the actual visibility that you see, your window of vision here is pretty good, pretty wide. Now, when it comes to backing up, blind spots are there, but you've got the all-around monitor here, which works very well. It's something Nissan's really done a good job uh, to create some value here when it comes to the technology. Now, as far as the technology is concerned, this infotainment system does have a bit of a learning curve and the menus can be a little bit fussy, but once you get through that, um, it works pretty well and the controls here a lot more simply laid out than some of its competition, say, like the Ford Explorer. When it comes to scoring our technologies, the audio navigation system gets reasonably high marks for its sound quality but can have a steep learning curve with its menus. The driving aids here, which included a blind spot warning and cross traffic alert, were well done for a total technology score of 4 out of 5 stars. One thing I was pretty impressed with was the second row seat on the passenger side which has a unique tilt and slide feature to make getting to the third row pretty easy. And while it's really mostly for kids, the third row offers up reasonable space with room for both your feet and legs. If you're sitting back here, the first thing you'll notice is the fact that you can adjust this back seat in quite a few ways. This lower seat cushion adjusts fore and back which is good for the third row seat passengers because you can push it up and give them a little bit more space. If there's nobody back there, why you can push it back and get more leg room up here. You can also recline these seat backs, adjust their angle. What's not so good is, as you can see here, I'm sitting down kind of low here. In fact, I feel like I'm sitting in a hole a little bit. These knees are up. Not exactly the most comfortable. It's something I normally expect to find in a compact SUV, not in a near full-size one. And there's so much headroom here. Um, I just think they could have raised this up just a little bit, but on the plus side, I do have HVAC vents back here. There's audio controls. There's even a power plug back here for any number of things. Those seats which afford room for up to seven passengers can fold down in a variety of configurations and getting them down is pretty easily done for both the second and the third rows. Once down, the floor is flat, but a bit high up. Under the rear cargo floor, you'll find some extra storage space too for your gear and your doodads. There is a spare tire on the Pathfinder, but it's accessed from underneath. 
The interior, while admittedly not the most exciting design out there, is well built overall with quality materials. It's comfortable and offers lots of storage and flexibility for, well, the uses and activities we buy SUVs for, so it scores out with 4 out of 5 stars. Under the hood is Nissan's venerable VQ Series 3.5 liter V6, though in a relatively mild tune of only 260 horsepower. And here it comes only with a constantly variable transmission, which gives it an EPA estimated 20 mpg city, 27 mpg highway, and 23 mpg combined. You know, one thing I can say about this engine is it's very smooth and it's very refined. One of the more refined in the business, in my opinion. The only thing is, with 260 horsepower, it's not the most powerful in its competitive set. Most of its competitors better it by as much as 30 horsepower, so if power is your hot button, you might want to drive the other ones first. The other thing is, this has the CVT, the Constantly Variable Transmission. Now, I've never been a fan of these things. I always make sure I tell you folks that, so... Um, if it doesn't bother you, you're probably going to like it because when it comes to CVTs, Nissan does build one of the better ones in the business because it does throw you the occasional randomized sort of simulated shift point to make it feel more like a traditional transmission. So if you really put your foot down, you get that feeling that you're shifting gears even though, well, you're really not. We were able to achieve the advertised 23 mpg combined even with the air conditioner on at all times, which is good. With that in mind, when it came to scoring the powertrain, that performance offset our gripes with the CVT, achieving 4 out of 5 stars. Now, the Pathfinder rides on the same chassis platform as the Nissan Murano and Infiniti QX60, and it has pretty much the same parts and bits underneath. These are a McPherson strut front suspension and a multi-link rear axle. Driving around town, as well as on the highway, this offers a very quiet and composed ride. What it doesn't offer is sports car handling. It's not exactly what I would call agile and sharp. This is more a boulevard cruiser, so it's quiet and smooth, and for the most part, it offers up a quality driving experience, the only exception being when you get on some rougher pavement where there's potholes or ripples in the surface, it can get a little bit unsettled. While all-wheel drive is an option, ours was a front-wheel drive model. The all-wheel drive does offer driver controls for various traction and terrain modes, including a full front and rear lock. Ground clearance is 7 inches on both the front and all-wheel drive pathfinders. With its softer handling character, which tends to be less sharp than some competitors, and its penchant to lose composure on rougher surfaces, the chassis and handling score for the pathfinder comes in at 4 out of 5 stars. When it comes to safety, the IIHS tests show the Pathfinder to perform well, earning a top safety pick. It achieves good ratings in their full battery of testing, including the brutal small overlap crash test, but it doesn't yet offer crash prevention tech, thus it's not eligible for a top safety pick plus status. Overall quality here is good in the build, with only a few rattles and squeaks to be heard. The paint finish, I thought, though, seemed less smooth and shiny than some, but overall body fit and a solid structure bring our quality fuel score to 4 out of 5 stars for the Pathfinder. Rounding it up for the Nissan Pathfinder, let's have a look at the specs. Now, as you can see right there, pricing on this one comes in at just under $40,000. This is a mid-level trim grade. It's got two-wheel drive and we're at 40K. Now that sounds like a lot of money, and it is, but we're right in line with what you'd spend for an Explorer, a Pilot, or a Highlander if you were equipping it very similar to this one. The exceptions to that rule might be perhaps the Kia Sorento or the Hyundai Santa Fe. They tend to push more value at you, um, but they're a little bit smaller in some cases. Now, fuel economy here, 23 MPG for the week. That city and highway combined in exactly what the window sticker promised. So it's always a good thing when I can get that given the air conditioners on because it's very hot out here. Now, what that does for our value score is four stars. And when you combine it with everything else we've talked about this week, that's four stars for the week. I'm Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. I hope you enjoyed the ride. 
You know, I have to admit that I really do miss the days when the Pathfinder used to be a truck. And I'm talking about back when it first came out. Remember that? It used to be on the hard body pickup truck platform. It was brawny, it was muscular, it had off-road tires and wheels. It was a man's SUV. And there's hardly any of those on the market anymore. They've all become these family cars, these soccer mom mobiles. And to Nissan's credit, they sell probably more than twice as many of these now than the old truck-based Pathfinder. So you can't argue with the numbers on that end, but I just miss the days when you could buy a Pathfinder and go park it in front of the gym and be proud. Of course, I bet a lot of guys still do. Anyway, if you like the test drive you saw, click on the link right there and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We test drive one, sometimes two cars every single week. Plus, we have a new video almost every single day. There's always something new, so stay tuned.